accomplishments of our own. We have been fortunate enough to be born in the United States under the most comfortable conditions. We therefore have a responsibility to others who are less well off. All our, all our families that are going through these struggles I feel like we're at our wits end in a race against time. And I was just saying, you know, they can body bust me in 1972, they can union bust me in 2000, and they can family bust us in 2008, but they can never soul bust us. Thank you. It's worked from the mid-60s to early 2000, so 35, 36 years as an operating room nurse. Of those years since 1979, she had multiple sclerosis. Over 20 years, she had multiple sclerosis. She's a retired operating room nurse. She has multiple sclerosis. She's 68 years old, and she still doesn't have single-payer health care in the world's uh, most having the opportunity to enact single-payer health care country. The country that is most able to do that, but least willing from the government leadership, uh, but yet on every poll the American public are demanding. She worked from the mid-60s to early 2000, so 35, 36 years as an operating room nurse. Of those years since 1979, she had multiple sclerosis. Over 20 years, she had multiple sclerosis. Um, she had health insurance, she never had a, a personal assistant. I do. I find strength in knowing that she still can live an independent life and isn't told that she has to live in a nursing institution, or as I would say, a nursing prison. So I find strength in the fact that every day she can do what she wants to do independently, and that she makes that choice. Uh, everyone in this country should have choices on where they want to give their time and energy to improve our democracy. She chose to do it her entire life through healthcare, and now she chose to do it through her nonprofit organizations and her local faith organizations. So um, there should be more choices for everybody to give their time and energy when they want to do what I think we're all trying to do is improve our society, improve our community, improve our world. I find strength and communities coming together and giving each other support uh, through solidarity and through working together, cooperation, uh, basically building more bridges, more alliances to give us an unstoppable movement. They failed us, so we gave them a chance for many, many, many years and they failed us. So now we're going in a different direction. Uh, democracy, community, cooperation, and radical solidarity. Um, I guess if you call a nonprofit a benevolent corporation, maybe so, but I still would like to see even a more radical transformation of that for our society. I'd just like to go to a society where it doesn't worry about dollar signs anymore or cash registers or what the market says. I want to know what moms and dads and sons and daughters and families and communities hate them. I just think they don't work and they've proven to not work. They, they, they for all. Because we're in a crisis. And when you're in a crisis, you voice uh, your ideas for solutions. And uh, I think we're doing that very effectively. I think Occupy movement all across the world is doing that. And, uh, Occupy Chicago is a chapter that continues to voice solutions uh, from everyday people and everyday families and everyday communities that work to improve the quality of life for all of us. So we have a planet of all, by all, and for all people instead of of all corporations, by all corporations. You find the strength from inside and in knowing that we're a global movement, that we uh, we live in a part of the world where we do have an opportunity to change things. There's a lot of places in the world where people don't have freedom of speech. We do have it. We should exercise it. Well, uh, we have to demand that our government has more s services and programs for people with disabilities, more health care, not just health insurance. And there has to be a safety net for those who put the most time and energy into the most important jobs that have the highest turnover rate 
and seem to be the jobs that people have the least amount of patience for. I would think that healthcare and healthcare providers could uh, give testimony that it's definitely not one of the easier jobs in society. So yeah, I think she's she's uh, definitely earned something far different than what is right now provided for uh, healthcare providers in this country, especially healthcare providers who have had a disability the majority of the time that they worked and are retired especially. Somebody should have a retirement with dignity if they've given their entire life to this country, one of the most lowest paying jobs, uh, highest stress jobs. Um, they've earned a high quality of life that is on par with anyone else in this country. First of all, I would say you're not alone. We're with you in your struggle to uh, have universal health care brought to America for all so that no one ever goes bankrupt again from uh, a basic uh, medical procedure or a major medical procedure. And I think that all people in this country deserve a dignified life, and that includes full of health care and uh, uh, timely response to uh, whatever they need from their health care providers. So the first, uh, the first step is? The first step in enacting that is ousting all the legislators that for years have given us false promises. The second step is putting people in those positions of power who understand what democracy really is and as a result of that they'll understand what health care for all really is. And the third step is keeping an eye on them every second of every day to make sure they stick to their promises that we that we have finally achieved through systematic change. Demanding systematic change is center to all of these ideas because the, the legislature and the leadership that now exists has proven themselves to not care about any meaningful reform at all. They just give us lip service because that's what they do best. They try to run out the clock. So we need to oust the people who have run out the clock and put people in positions of power that actually represent everyday people, everyday families, everyday communities. For many things, but one of the most important is universal single-payer health. Favorite saying? Um, we can do anything for us, stop. Each time a man stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope and crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, those ripples build a current which can sweep down the mightiest walls of oppression and resistance.